Well, we're continuing our series on the, from formula to relationship. These are the teachings um, in written form. They have been at my website for, what, 20 years. But, you know, today's generation doesn't do much reading, I found. <laughs> and the Lord gave me an instruction to go ahead and, and uh, teach those again. But do them in a modern format. You know, when I did, first did those, we didn't even know what an MP3 was way back in the day when I did those. And uh, so I would pray and write them out and, and post them at the website, and they've been there. And they're, I've been back over these again and again, of course, before I retaught them this time. I haven't had to change anything. Listen, the truth is the truth, and it does not change. But um, uh, I hope you've been listening to, to the... <laughs> these uh, previous lessons and uh, before I even uh, so if you go to the website and on the home page on the right hand side you'll see a word that says articles if you click on that it takes you to a page where I'm teaching from and it's from formula to relationship and there's three sections there we're in the first section and I'm going to I'm going to jump over the serving son teachings because I taught those at a later date. They are already available at the website. Uh, they are in MP3 format, so that's a modern format where you can listen to them in your car or while you're, you know, uh, working at home or whenever you have spare time on a walk at the park or whatever. So, and I can't improve on them. If I, if I taught them again, it'd be word for word the same thing. <laughs> Um, he may have me do it again to in order to have them at YouTube or Rumble, which uh, we're going to be at Rumble very soon, by the way. And uh, so, anyway, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm jumping over the Serving Son series. And today we're going to teach, start the, the, uh, the lesson on uh, solving financial problems. Now, but before I even get to there, let me, let me mention a few things here. Um, Oh, to get to the Serving Son series, I, I wrote it down for you just in case. And to get to that Serving Son series, you go to GaryCarpenter.org, click on Media, then on New Creation Realities, and that takes you to a page where there's a group of s several series on there. Series number five is the Serving Son, and there are six lessons there, so I've taught it in great detail, and I, again... I listened to them. I, I wouldn't change a thing. They're the truth. They were the truth then. They're the truth now. So I uh, recommend those to you. And one other thing I'd like to recommend to you. See, I, I am assuming <laughs> that I am dealing with uh, people that are not lazy, that, that have a job, that understand that in this world, he that does not provide for his own, or let's say it another way, doesn't support his family, have a job. Uh, whether it's full-time ministry or full-time secular. It says that, you know, if, if you don't support your family, you're worse than an infidel. <laughs> That's pretty bad, you know. Paul says, if a man will not work, now he will not. Now, in other words, there are people that can't. You know, if you're disabled, that's a whole, whole different thing. But if you can work, but you will not, you just will not, don't let him eat. And, you know, I have found that to hunger is a great motivator, you know. <laughs> so there's lots of courses already out there on how to do the natural things like budget. Uh, Sue and I immediately had to have a budget. I had a budget before I went into ministry. But so I'm, I'm kind of assuming, I'm, I, the, you know, the people that watch these are normally decent, hardworking people that are already doing their best to live their lives in a way to glorify God. Um, uh, you know, they're already givers for the most part. And let me tell you, you can be a hardworking, decent, honest, Christ-loving person and be a regular giver, however you, you're, you do that with the Lord. And still, have you noticed? Storms will come, financial storms. <laughs> unexpected things or sometimes expected things and still there wasn't enough money so that's the kind of thing that we're going to talk about today now i would recommend to you uh, a series by pastor dave roberson they're still at his website uh, 
I can't even tell you how many times I have listened to these in, these this series, and I've done my best to incorporate every single principle into my life all of these years. If you've not heard them, or if it's been 10 years since you heard them, <laughs> let me recommend them to you again. And it's a, you go to daveroberson.org. Uh, on the left-hand side or at the top, there's two ways. You click on Series. It takes you to the Series page. Scroll down till you come to Prosperity, A Matter of the Heart. In fact, we're going to... We're going to post a link in the description of this YouTube video, a link to that entire series, just to make it easy for you. So you can click on that link and go there. And let me just read the titles to you. These are the end of it. One, two, three. There's six, six lessons here. You know, you could almost get a refreshing just by reading these anointed titles. The titles are anointed. <laughs> a lot of people stop after, after hearing title number one. <laughs> I love this. Get a job, lazy man. <laughs> Number two, faith for your stewardship. Later on in this series, we're going to be talking a lot about stewardship. Faith for your stewardship. The third lesson is your access to God's wisdom. We're going to talk about that some today in this lesson. But your access to God's wisdom. The next one is God's exaltation in finances. What? God himself will get involved to exalt you in your finances? Yes, he will. There's more to it than just give more into the offering plate. I'll just give you a preview. <laughs> okay. The next, the next title, Making Luke 6.38 Work for You. Everyone knows Luke 6.38. It's usually quoted at offering time, but, you know, give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. I'm probably not quoting it exactly, but everybody's familiar with that verse. It's normally quoted at offering time. <laughs> Most people can quote it. Most people can't get it to work for them. Well, Pastor Dave, oh, it's, it's masterful, that lesson on making Luke 6.38 work for you. And then the, the sixth one, this is hardly ever taught when you go to, uh, you know, like kingdom finance seminars type thing. Unforgiveness kills your finances. Boy, is that the truth. Unforgiveness kills your finances. So I want to recommend those to you, that, that series. And again, we're going to put a link to it in the description part of this YouTube video. So uh, I just recommend that to you. All right, uh, let me, we're getting ready to get into the lesson today. All right, let's just start. And again, you can go to the articles page of my website. You can print this out if you want, just so you can follow along. And uh, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm not going to read every paragraph, but I'm going to read some of them. So it starts off like this. This is one of the most common questions that I've received over these years. Uh, still get it today. Dear Gary, you, you might come by email, by telephone, however it comes. Dear Gary, will God really help me solve my financial problems? See, in one form or another, this is one of the most common questions that I'm asked. And I always respond with, yes, he will. Of course he will. But then the next question is, well, how? <laughs> how will God help me? solve my financial problems see and i wrote this 20 years ago but it's the same today many people today are under serious or tremendous financial pressure again most of the people that that are connected with our ministry are already hard-working decent people they're already doing their best to live their lives holy before the lord pleasing unto him most of them are givers. Most of them church, attend church. They're already people that, that give, give in, uh, on a regular basis to the kingdom of God. But see, when they ask this question, most of the time, you know, they, let me just say the standard answer, if you used to ask a TV preacher, can I just say it that way? <laughs> well, the answer is, yeah, he'll help you. But first, you've got to give more of your finances to God in an offering. 
if you want God to help you, you got to give to him. You got to, you got to sow more. It's all, it seems like the answer is always, we just got to give more. Well, I certainly believe in giving in our finances to the Lord. I've said time and again, Sue and I have been givers. We always took, we have taken the tithe, if you want to call the tithe just 10% now, not, not, not under the Mosaic law. But see, I, it just seems to me to make sense if, 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 if God needed, and again, I've already taught on this, but remember, there was no king, there was no government. When God gave this law to Moses, there was no king over the nation. God was their king. And in, in a sense, the tithe was and offerings was the method of taxation, if you'll allow me. This was, this was how God had money in the temple to pay for his full-time ministers, which were the, the priests and the Levites. It was how God was able to feed the, have money to feed the, the widow, to provide for the orphan and the stranger and, and uh, many other things that needed to be done. And there were expenses that had to be paid. See, you just carry that, just that simple logic over into the New Testament. Sue and I always understood, listen, the prayer center, our church, it's still, that's where we give today. They got employees to pay. There's, uh, you know, they're still ministering to the masses. Dave's book is still being printed, distributed. They mail letters to the prisoners, the uh, email questions that go out, the counseling that is done. And, uh, you know, there's employees to be paid. There's electricity to be paid. There's, it, there's just like then, now, there's normal expenses. So Sue and I have just always taken that 10% to be like, well, that's the minimum. That's, that's the bare bone minimum to give just because there's bills to pay. I mean, it, it just takes, it's just pure logic. There was bills to pay then, there's bills to pay now. Our giving is, you know, I mean, that's to us is like, that, that's the minimum to honor God and be thankful wherever you receive your food from, wherever you, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where you, your, your basic giving starts. And so ours then and still today, even though we don't at present have a building, <laughs> but still the ministry continues and, and our tithe, our, ten, our first 10% goes there. But we, we, we do much more giving than that. We, we, we give into orphanages. We give into evangelism work. We give to some TV ministries that, we, that really feed us. And so we're doing our best to give above, way above and beyond the, the tithe. And so, again, I'm just saying we're not, we're not teaching you to, to, to do something we're not, we're not already doing. But see, I know most of you are already doing that, see. You're already doing that, but still financial problems, things, things will come up. Will God help me? Well, let's find out. So I do know, listen, I know it's important to give to the Lord. We give to the Lord. That's you give to the Lord. I already know that. But what if, what if, okay, I'm just going to read this par paragraph. I certainly believe in giving of our finances unto the Lord, but is that all there is? <laughs> To receiving his help is that is that the only trigger is that the only thing that that will activate the Lord to come help you see see the vast majority of the people who write in with this question are already faithful givers into the Lord's work they are so let's let's take a look at a specific financial difficulty that arose during Peter's lifetime and let's see and this is while the Lord Jesus was on the earth where we can see what he does Let's see how his, how his help came in a different form than the standard answer to just give more. I just want to mention it ahead of time. Jesus' answer to Peter was not, Oh, Peter, you just need to give more into the bag. Find Judas. He's carrying the bag for, our, for the ministry. Make sure you go over there and, and give into that bag, Peter, because that, that's how your help will come. You will not find that. <laughs> That, that did not happen here. Okay, all right. <laughs> so go ahead and, and it, you ought to look at this one, I think. Go to Matthew 17, and we're going to start in verse 24. And uh, I, I, this is not a passage you hear very often taught <laughs> because there's nothing in it about giving into the ministry. There's no, you know, it doesn't fit the agenda <laughs> of most uh, prosperity messages today. Okay. 
Matthew 17, starting in verse 24. When they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Does, you, does not your master pay tribute? <laughs> They're always trying to catch Jesus in something. And Peter says, Well, yes. And then when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him. Jesus stopped him, saying, what thinkest thou, Saint Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Let me turn the page. And Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. The, the teacher in me, there is so much to teach right there, but it's another subject for another day. Today we're sticking with the subject, solving financial problems. <laughs> so verse 27, Jesus still talking. He says, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that first cometh up, the first fish. When, yet, when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Um, this tribute is commonly called the temple tax or the poll tax. Under the law of Moses, it was required that every Israelite male, 20 years old or older, pay this tax. And it, this tax was in addition, of course, to the tithe. And this was for the maintenance of the temple. You can read all about it in Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16. And there's lots of lessons that we could teach from there. But again, if you want to go read about the, this, this tax that they're talking about, Exodus 30, verses 11 through 16. We're not going to read it today on this broadcast. Now, the tax was the same for everybody, rich and poor, and it amounted to half a shekel for each male. According to the footnote in the New American Standard Bible, that amounted to roughly two days wages. So it's not totally insignificant. It's like two days pay. But it's not a huge amount either, like, a, you know, $200,000 or something. But it is an amount that had to be paid by each male over 20 years old every year. Now, as we go through this example of how the Lord resolved this financial problem, please keep this thinking in the present tense. We don't want to just think about a temple tax. Well, what if you, have you ever had a tax bill due? <laughs> Is April 15th ever... Well, of course, you might be in another country, but it, when the tax, when it came time to pay your tax, it was like, oh God, oh God, tax, tax, I got to pay that bill in a month. I haven't saved back enough money. Oh God. Now, most of you have your, your taxes uh, taken out weekly or monthly or whenever you get paid and it's done automatically so you don't have this problem. But see, I've always, nearly always my whole life been uh, like we, what you call an independent contractor. Uh, when we had the construction business, uh, you know, I had to set aside taxes because I didn't get paid a weekly salary, you know. And when I, even when we had the uh, the uh, tr trucking, when I was driving with the trucks, I was considered an independent contractor and they paid me based on the number of miles that I drove. But it was up to me to withhold my taxes and, and pay my taxes and everything. So I know what it is. I mean, I better set it. And it's still that way for me today, even in ministry. Do you know preachers have to pay taxes? What? <laughs> I gotta pay income tax like you. I gotta pay, and I've paid social security uh, tax my whole life. Still paying it today, even though I'm drawing it, but I'm still paying it. Anyway, that's, that's another whole story. <laughs> Wisdom from God. And thank God to do it the way I do it. He, it's really been a blessing, okay. But we, I know what it is to come up. Oh God, it's time. Monday, I got to pay the tax. I, I don't have enough. Jesus, will you help me? Here's today's lesson. So watch this. <laughs> Peter, so let's keep it relevant. <gasps> Peter, your tax bill is due. <laughs> you need money to pay it. Now, when people writing, write in asking me if the Lord will help them with their financial problems, it's because they have bills, either due or past due, and they need money to pay them. You ever been there? Maybe you're there right now. Gary, will the Lord help me? <laughs> yes, yes. 
Well, let's let's continue in this lesson here. Let's see what the Lord does for Peter, because what he does for one, he'll do for all. See, he's no respecter of persons. If he helped Peter pay his tax bill, or uh, let's don't just stick with taxes. If he helped Peter with his financial problem, he will help you with your financial problem. But trust me, he has a lot more wisdom for you than just give into the offering. I want to say it again. Read it for yourself. He did not send Peter to put an offering into the ministry bag that Judas carried. Please get that. See, that's what the TV preacher today would tell you. You're sitting there. Will God help me with my financial problem? Well, yes, he will. Go find Judas. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give more money. You know, you got you got to put money into the bag or in what the, the way they do it today. Well, you need to give to God. By the way, my address is post office box so and so. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the answer to your problem is give more money into my ministry. I hate to say it that way, but that's you know it's true. You know it's true. That's the standard stock answer. But he didn't send Peter to give to find Judas and put money into the bag. He didn't do that. Let's see what he did do. Now notice, this, this subheading is called Specific Instructions. See, we're going from formula to relationship. I want you to notice this. Jesus gave Peter specific instructions. Go thou to the sea. Okay, this is Matthew 17, 27. Go thou to the sea, cast in a hook, Take up the fish that first cometh up. It's the first one. When thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take and give unto them for me and thee. Now, it is just as important to pay close attention to what the Lord did not say to Peter as what he did say. Notice he did not say, in order to get God's blessing on this situation, Peter, go to the temple and give a large offering. Or, like the example I used earlier, <laughs> go find Judas. He has the ministry bag. He, 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 you know, he's the uh, comptroller, the accountant uh, for, the, for the ministry. Go find. You first got to give an offering into the bag, into the ministry. He didn't send Peter to do that. Now, Peter, being raised a Jew, he, he was already a giver, okay? That, that's not the issue here. He's got a problem, and will Jesus help him? You may have a financial problem. Will he help you? All right, let's continue. See, what Peter needed was exactly what the Lord gave him. Wisdom in the form of specific instructions. Telling Peter what he needed to do in order to solve the problem. At this point, I have to say it again. What the Lord did for Peter, he will do for you. You hear me? I'm going to say it again. What the Lord did for Peter, he will do for you. He will give you specific instructions. Now, everyone would agree that going fishing, <laughs> what's, what's your wisdom, Lord? I have a tax problem. I need, we, I need to pay my tax. What's your wisdom? What should I do? Go fishing. What? Uh, very often, I'm going to get into this in a little, little later, very often the wisdom from above is not what you would expect. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to read this paragraph. I can't improve on it anyway. Everyone agree would agree that going fishing, your, your counsel, if, here's Peter, I got a tax problem. <laughs> what should I do? Go fishing. <laughs> Now, you got to understand, for Peter, that was his occupation. He did understand that. See, and, and so, really, if we really teach this, he's probably going to deal with you in something that you know. Okay? But see, even when Jesus would deal with them earlier, previous to all of this, when he was first showing them his lordship, that they remember that time they fished all night? And these are experienced fishermen. They're professionals. This is how they make a living. They've been doing it their whole lives. And Jesus, they've been fishing all night, and then they did nets. You know, they weren't really with a hook most of the time. They were nets, and they'd fished all night. And, and that's normally when you went fishing in the Sea of Galilee there. 
and they didn't catch a thing. So here comes Jesus, a preacher from Nazareth, not, a, not an experienced fisherman. But he says, cast your net on the other side of the boat. Well, number one, that's not the way you do it. Okay. Number two, it's daylight. That's not the way you do it. But Jesus tells them to do something that's not normally done. Well, you're going, if you're going to follow Jesus, you better get used to the idea. You're going to be doing stuff that's not normally done. Okay. Cast your net on the other side. And it didn't make any sense to them. You can tell Peter's kind of doing it. Okay, but at thy word, we'll, we'll do it. In other words, we're, we're going to do it. But I wonder if there were some eye rolls on the boat. You know, this preacher from Nazareth. Okay. <laughs> cast the net they did it in a un, not the normal wisdom of man but they followed the instruction that came from above God, about to have a run fit i get these goosebumps i don't know if you get them but when there's a wave right there just whoa when you when you get the wisdom from above and you act on it all things are possible it, they cast the net on the other side. And you know the story. They had caught so many fish. They had to call their partners in the other boats to help them because it was about to break the net, sink the boat. <laughs> Peter had already had that experience. So when Jesus says, okay, I got, Jesus, I have a tax problem. Here's what I want you to do. Number one, go fishing. What? Maybe you didn't hear me, Jesus. <laughs> I have a tax problem. I know. I want you to go fishing. <laughs> Okay, I will try and read this paragraph. I'm having too much fun. Everyone would agree that going fishing to solve a tax problem sounds like a very unusual instruction to act on. You will find out that the Lord's instructions very often fly in the face of natural human wisdom. But notice that this instruction was very much within the scope of Peter's ability. After all, Peter had spent his life as a fisherman. The Lord did not ask him to do something that he could not do. See, this is something Peter can do. The only thing, oh, I love this. If we could all learn this. <laughs> the only thing required of Peter was obedience. <laughs> Just obedience to the instructions he received from the Lord, unusual or not. Now, most people would agree that if the Lord would come and give them answers to the following questions, their financial difficulties would be solved. Now these questions are, and I have four of them here. I have a financial problem, Lord. I need you to help solve my financial problem. Here's what I need. I need to know, number one, what to do. Number two, how to do it. Number three, where to do it. And number four, when to do it. <laughs> what, how, where, and when. What to do, how to do it, where to do it, and when to do it. Now the Lord's specific instructions to Peter included all four of those things. What to do? Go fishing. Turn in the page again. How to do it? Cast in a hook. Now see that is somewhat unusual. Because the normal way that they fished in the Sea of Galilee was cast a net. They didn't normally use a hook, but I'm sure he probably had before. But anyway, this is the how to do it. Cast in a hook. Number three, where to do it. He told him the sea. N not a river. Not a pond. He's telling him where to do it. Go to the sea, the Sea of Galilee. When to do it. When he said go in the Greek tense that word indicates now go now do it now regarding how the Lord gave very detailed step-by-step -step instructions notice it says take the first fish that comes up number okay this is the how take the first fish open its mouth you will find the money there and then take the money and pay the tax bill with it. So how? Very specific. Now, after thoughts that I've had over the years, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm thinking Peter thought, in my entire life, I have never, I've caught 
so many fish out of this sea. I have never yet found money in a fish's mouth. <laughs> So then I'm thinking, oh, Peter goes and he obeys the instructions and the very first fish, he opens up the mouth, oh, money, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here and keep fishing. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. My brain works that way, but he, no, he, he gave him instructions. No, nope, you're only going to need to catch one. <laughs> Go to the sea. Let me read it again. Take the first fish, Peter. Don't stay all day. <laughs> Take the first fish. Open its mouth. You'll find the money. You're, you're done fishing. Now go pay, go pay the taxes with it. Notice, it is precise, detailed, step by step, easy to follow instructions. None of these things are hard. They just require obedience. This is the kind of leadership that is available to all born-again children of the living God if we can ever learn to forsake formula for relationship with the Lord. Way back in December 20th, 1996, the Lord said to me, quote, Now when I say the Lord, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. It was during a time of prayer. The Lord spoke to me and said, I am going to change the church's mentality regarding kingdom finances from formula to relationship. Now notice, was Peter's relationship with the Lord important to receiving this detailed leadership to resolve the financial difficulty? Was it important? Or was it okay for Peter to go, I know what to do. I'll just, where's Judas? Let me find him. Well, I'm, I'm going to, okay, there he is. I'm going to go, I've got a little money. I'm going to go give more money into the ministry or go to the temple. I'm going to go to the temple. I'm going to put it, I know that's, I know that's what to do. I've heard every TV preacher forever. That's what you do. You go give more and you sit there and you wait for some kind of money to drop out of heaven or something. I don't know what exactly they, they're expecting us to do. No. What if you actually spent time with the Lord? What, what if you develop a relationship with the Lord where he hears your voice and you hear his voice? And again, all of those wonderful lessons taught to us by Pastor Dave Roberson about learning to hear the voice of God and all the benefits that come with praying extended hours in other tongues and allowing the Holy Spirit to become your teacher and your guide so that we're not orphans. We're not, a, we're not left alone to find our own way in this world. Peter wasn't left alone to figure out some kind of way of paying his tax. No, he got detailed, precise, step-by-step -step instructions from the Lord. Okay. Of course, Peter's relationship and fellowship was the Lord. He had an ongoing daily relationship with Jesus. There was daily fellowship between the two of them. Peter received his instructions directly from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. You, I used to think, oh, it would be so wonderful. It's just not fair. It's not fair. Peter, Peter was able to hear you directly, Lord. He could hear the words directly from your mouth to his ear. It's not fair. <laughs> and then one time the Lord reminded me when he said, didn't I say it's better for you in the King James? It's expedient for you <laughs> that, that I leave and go to be with the Father. Didn't I tell you that? And see, and really expedient, a little blind to us, what it really means is you're, it's better, Gary, it's better for you that I left. It's better for you. You have a better position, a better advantage than Peter had. I said, how is that possible? See, because in order for anyone to hear the wisdom directly from Jesus' mouth, you had to geographically be where Jesus was. If I want to, if Jesus was on planet Earth today, okay, let's just rewind. If, if Jesus was physically still had an office in Jerusalem, a ministry office, <laughs> you know, set up in Jerusalem, and, and you wanted, you know, of course, now today we have telephone and we have email, but back then, I would have had to get on a ship or something, travel across the ocean, go to Israel, go to Jerusalem, find Jesus, wherever he's ministering, find Jesus, put my number, you know, take a number to get counsel with Jesus. You know, and my, 
my number is 4,627. You know, it's going to be three years and then maybe I can. It's better for us today. See, because he did not leave us as orphans. You can receive, your, your spiritual ear can receive the wisdom that comes from the lips of the living Jesus today. But it's done by the Holy Ghost. Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, He doesn't speak on His own. In other words, He doesn't speak of His own accord. What He hears, that's what He speaks to you. We are so much better off today. I don't care where you are. If you can be in the jungles of Africa, or you could be on the pinnacle of the highest building in New York City in a business meeting, and you are able, your spiritual ear is to hear the wisdom that comes from the lips of Jesus by the Holy Ghost. I'm about to have a running fit. <laughs> I just want to go pray now. <laughs> I want to go pray and listen. Oh my goodness. So you talk about solving financial problems. You think Jesus is not in the business of giving us the how, when, where, and what to do? He, he, he's still in that business. He will help you. He, is not, he told us plainly, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. But how he comes to us now is by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to travel there. He has traveled where you are by the way of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I, just, see, I want to just reteach all of those lessons. Oh, my goodness. Let me, let me say this again. Peter got this wisdom directly through his relationship and daily fellowship with the Lord. Now, that is precisely how the Lord intends for you and me to receive our counsel from Him. But at this point, again, I'm going to, well, I've already kind of done this. Peter, you, you, we would all say, well, but Peter was there. He was able to hear the words directly from the mouth of Jesus. So can you. I said it again. What? So can you. That's why this dispensation is better we have an advantage over Peter. Peter had to be exactly in Jesus' physical location in order to hear that wisdom that would come from his lips, from the lips of Jesus. We can hear it no matter where we are on planet Earth, no matter what situation we're in, in prison, in business, raising children, running a ministry, doesn't matter. You have instant access to the wisdom that comes from Jesus. I'm going to say this, the words that come from his mouth, you can hear with your spiritual ear by the agency of the Holy Ghost. God. Right now, I just want to, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to go pray now. I just want to go get quiet and hear that still small voice that comes from the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Oh my goodness. See, in John 14, 18, Jesus, in the King James, it says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. But the Greek word translated comfortless is orphanos, O-R-P-H-A-N-O-S. It's Strong's number 3737. And of course, it's where we get the word orphan. So what Jesus actually said is, I will not leave you as an orphan. Listen, an orphan has no adult, mature person to provide for them, to lead them, to guide them, to tell them what to do. An orphan is on his own. I don't know why I always picture like a Charles Dickens book, you know, a little seven-year-old boy and little ragamuffin boy and his, maybe he's got his five-year-old sister by the hand and they're going down through the dark alleyway of London and they're looking through trash cans hoping to find a half-eaten apple core or something. You know, and they got no one to provide for them. There's no one to protect them, no one to lead them. He did not leave us like that. He did not leave us. We are not orphans. We have a provider. We have a guide. We have a protector. We have a savior. It's our Lord Jesus Christ, but he does it all by the agency of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are not orphans. We are not parentless. We are not fatherless. That very same Jesus Christ that gave Peter such precise, detailed 
leadership and instructions. He is alive and well today, seated at the right hand of the Father. His counsel is just as available to you as it was to Peter. The difference is we receive it now by the agency of the Holy Spirit through fellowship. Now, look at these verses over in John 14, 16 through 17. Just, these are just prior to John 14, 18, the one we just read where he says, I will not leave you comfortless. John 14, 16 and 17 says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you, you know him. He dwelleth with you is what he said to them then and shall be in you, see? And if you've been born of God and Spirit-filled, the Holy Spirit is in you. I want to say it again and again. You have access by the Holy Spirit to the very wisdom that comes from the mind of Christ. Let me say it even more. To me, this is even more clear. If you can picture your words coming from the mouth of Jesus to the ear of Peter in the natural, same way you're hearing my voice now, my natural voice coming, words coming from my mouth to your natural ear. In the realm of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost brings you the, the, the words that come from the lips of Jesus and you hear them. You Actually, you discern them, the Bible says, by your Spirit. Last week, I think it was, or maybe two weeks ago, I talked with you about that time he told me about my next car. I didn't know what kind of car I did. I'd been looking at cars, and of course, I spent a lot of time praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, and it doesn't always come right at that instant while you're praying, but that wisdom is still being transferred to your spirit. But there's an ongoing relationship and fellowship when you spend a lot of time praying in the Holy Ghost. It's called the koinonia, communion of the Holy Spirit. But anyway, if you remember that story, I didn't know what kind of car to buy, and I'd been looking. I'd, I'd say, I was driving a rental car at the time and by myself in the car, and I said, Lord, you know, a car like this would be okay. It was a Chevrolet, maybe a Malibu, I'm not sure, but a mid, mid-sized car. Uh, and I said, this would be, you know, something, this would be big enough for me to, to haul people around and do stuff, you know? And just as clear. Now, it's not always like this. To me, this time, it was like audible, come from the back seat of the car, and there's nobody back there but the Holy Ghost, I guess. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no other humans in the car with me. I heard a voice just as clear said, your next car is another town car. I mean, <laughs> and you've heard the story when I got home, a, a car salesman I had been working with had a message for me to call him, and he was kind of holding a car for me. He was trying to keep it from getting out on the showroom too quick. They were still cleaning it. And he was trying to say, get over here, Gary. I think this might be your car. It's in your price range. It's a low mileage and all of this. And I said, what kind of car is it? <laughs> oh, it's a town car. I knew it. I, I knew it before I saw it. You know, that was many years ago. I wish I had re looked up when we bought that car. It was a long time ago. That car's still in my driveway. Sue and I drove it yesterday. <laughs> that has been a wonderful, phenomenal car. We've had to put some money in it at times. I mean, you know, nothing. There's such a thing as maintenance. We had to replace the air conditioner over time. You know, I mean, it was due. But that's still a great car. And I was just, we were riding in it yesterday. I said, Lord, this car still just runs and drives fabulous. I just thank you for this car. See, I didn't want a car. I wanted the car. <laughs> And I think I got it. I think I got it. Oh, the wisdom. He has not left us comfortless. That I'm going to keep saying this. I want this image to burn in you. Jesus is alive and well, seated at the right hand of the Father. There is no way for you geographically to go there. Only in the Spirit can we go there. But listen, here's the image. The same way that, the, the, that Peter heard the words that came from the lips of Jesus... Your spirit today can discern here the words that come from the lips of Jesus, even though he's in heaven. But now they come by way of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost speaks what he hears. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we've got to turn the page again. <laughs> See, it's actually better for us 
better for us. Now, to show you how this process works, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And uh, we're going to read verses 12 through 14 in just a minute. See, in order to obtain the instructions that come from Jesus Christ, then during his earthly ministry, you had to geographically go where he was. But now, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Kind of hard to go there, okay? But the Holy Spirit has been given to each and every believer in all geographical locations. And you can have the mind of Christ, let me say it a little more specifically, the instructions that come from Him to you. They are available to you at all times by way of the Holy Ghost. Now this whole thing is, is Paul really kind of summarized it for us in his letter to the Corinthians. So let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. It says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God so that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God has lots of things already laid up for you. Can I use the word inheritance? <laughs> These things are all freely given to you of God. It's because you're His child. Verse 13, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but notice, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, see, the natural man that's not born again, the man that's not filled with the Holy Spirit, he receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Can you imagine telling a natural guy, you need to pay your taxes? Go fishing. He would never do it. But their foolishness unto him Neither can he know them. Now notice, because they are spiritually discerned. Your spirit has the capacity to discern the words, the instructions, the wisdom that comes from your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But they come by way of the Holy Spirit. He communicates them to your spirit. All that time that you spend praying in the Holy Ghost, he is passing the very mysteries of God through you, educating your spirit, teaching you. And he's also answering your prayers. Okay. This next section is called Leadership by Relationship and Fellowship. See, the last two words of 1 Corinthians 2.14 is the crux of the problem for most believers because it says these things are spiritually discerned. Most people want to find God's answers already formulated for them in a book or a tape series. <laughs> in other words, I want it already die. I don't want to have to go. I don't want to discern it spiritually. Just tell me in my natural brain. You know, you can learn many good things, many general principles that way. But it is highly unlikely that you're going to find the Lord's specific instructions to you as an individual by reading a book <laughs> or but to be honest even by hearing a preacher most of the time because really you know that that preacher doesn't know you he doesn't know your relationship with the lord he doesn't really even know your specific problem he knows you know even the best hearted ones know that that uh, <laughs> you know god has mercy on us and and god does love a a, a cheerful giver I think that's one of the reasons that the, the good-hearted ones, some of them are just greedy. Let's just call it what it is. You know, they just want your money. Not many of them, though, I don't think. Hopefully. <laughs> See, but you, and it's just, I'm just going to boil it down to it. That, that preacher, that, that book, now there's foundational things. You get a job, lazy man. Learn to budget. Don't spend more than you earn. Uh, be a, do be a giver. Be a faithful giver. God does what you're giving. We're going to talk about stewardship. If he, he plainly said, if He finds you faithful in how you handle money, if He finds you faithful, He'll watch you for a while. He says He will promote you in the kingdom. It, it's absolutely in there. Okay? But, see, who knows you? Who knows what you're going through? The Lord your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your Heavenly Father, 
the Holy Spirit, you need to get your instructions directly from from the Lord. Okay, the same way Peter did. Now, at this point, I'm I'll, I say I don't have your life to give examples from. I only have my life. Now, he called me into full time ministry, so I don't have many examples from you know a business, let's say a, like a job type. Uh, everything I've learned was after we were in ministry. So I only really have ministry examples. But it's no different than you still got to hear his instruction. If he'd have called me to be a, a businessman, I would still need to hear his precise instruction, just what to do, how to do it, where to do it, when to do it. I would, same thing. And it's been the same in the ministry. Now let me give you an example. With Sue and I first starting, this is our go fishing instructions. <laughs> this is this is how he spoke to us, and God just I've, I mean, let me just quote it. Uh, let me give you an example from my own life. When the Lord called Sue and I into full time ministry, He gave us these instructions. Now this is to us, not you. And I always say, please don't hear this and do this. What I the part I'd like for you to do is go pray and learn to hear his voice so you can hear his instructions for you. I'm reading to you his instructions to me. Okay? But look how precise it is. It's it's very much like what he said to Peter, and it also didn't make any sense. <laughs> go fishing to pay your taxes? What? What? Listen to what he said to me. If you thought that sounds crazy, listen to this. Take up no, quote, take up no offerings from these people and sell no tapes. Mail everything freely and do not even put in a return envelope. Never let a human being know of any need that you have. I am your source. If you will precisely, if you will precisely obey these instructions of mine, I will speak to the hearts of the people I choose to support both you and the needs of the ministry. Now, I have no idea if he's ever given those same instructions to anybody else. And to be honest, that's none of my business. What matters is, this is what he told me, Gary Carpenter and Sue Carpenter to do. These instructions made no sense to my natural mind at all. Sue and I were both full-time in the ministry. We had no secular income whatsoever. People have asked me, well, were you disabled? Did you get some kind of Social Security disabled? No. Uh, any kind of retirement income, uh, investment income. No, no, no. Can you understand the word zero? <laughs> Not a zip. <laughs> we had, there was no, no income source at all. Okay. When he gave us these instructions at the moment, when he, this is when he told us to do our first, uh, little Bible study where this $10 is coming from. We had $10. And a 20-year-old tape recorder, well, I, yeah, 20-year-old tape recorder at the time. You ought to have seen it. <laughs> we had no idea how we were going to be able to offer the tapes freely. Now, when I want to say tapes. This was back in the day when cassette tapes were the thing. Since then, of course, they went obsolete. CDs were the next thing, and now they're pretty much obsolete. Everything now is just done by streaming, you know, MP3. But this was back in the day of the cassette tapes. Did you know they didn't give those to you free? You had to buy those? <laughs> Did you know that the post office didn't mail them free? Did you know they wouldn't even give you free bubble mailers? <laughs> All of that took money. I had no idea. We had $10 when we started. We didn't know what in the world. And then now he's saying, don't take a... I mean, I'll just be honest with you. I'm just... As, Everybody, you know, every place I'd ever been, every church, every ministry, they took up offer. They did just the opposite. They took up offerings. They sold their cassette tapes, you know. Uh, and here he's telling me, don't do that. Oh, and if they, if you got anything in the mail from them, there was always a return envelope. You know, make it easy to. And he's telling me not to do any of that. We had no idea how we were going to get be able to offer the tapes freely or pay the postage. For that matter, we didn't know how we'd be able to even pay such simple things as our electric bill at the time. Now he's adding more expense on top of, I wouldn't, you know, I, this was during the time when I pay the electric bill this month and gas bill next month and hoping they wouldn't shut the electric off. I mean, you know, we're just, it was, uh, again, it's kind of funny the way I say it, but 
money was, listen, money was staying away in great abundance. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And then he gives me the, so we're, we're, we're not even being current with our bills at this moment. And now he's saying, oh, and I want you to send everything free and buy these cassette tapes and don't charge for them. And you pay the postage and don't, oh, don't put in a return envelope. No. What? I'd rather go fishing. <laughs> he was giving me my what, my how, my where, my when. He was, he was giving, these are, are pretty detailed. It's not hard to understand. I understand what you're saying, Lord. <laughs> he's going, Will you do it? <laughs> Peter obeyed, can I say, bizarre <laughs> instructions that I don't think many people have ever heard to pay a tax bill, go fishing, take the first fish, open its mouth, there's money, go pay the bill. Gary, I want you to go into full-time ministry. Don't sell any tapes. Don't take up any offerings. Don't put in a return envelope. You pay the postage. That's, how, that's my instructions. What? <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. I sometimes picture in my mind, I'm about to wrap it up, but I sometimes picture in my mind that scene of Peter <laughs> after he heard from Jesus, he's got a fishing pole over his shoulder. He's walking to the Sea of Galilee, Galilee, you know. I can't help but wonder, you know, if these thoughts were going through his mind, you know. He see him walking along with his fishing pole, he's got a tax bill to pay. And he's headed to the Sea of Galilee, walking along there. In all my years as a fisherman on this sea, I have never once caught a fish that had money in its mouth. <laughs> uh, this sure seems like a strange thing to do. I, this, this is kind of contrary to all my natural experience and all my natural wisdom. We don't even normally fish in this sea with a with a hook. We fish in this sea with a net. I've never heard of anybody getting their tax bill paid this way. <laughs> but this but this is what Jesus told me to do and I am going to do it. Now there's the answer. There right there is the answer to getting let's say it this way for today Right there is the answer to solving your financial problem. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had it right from the very beginning. Whatever he says to you, do it. Do it. Sue and I had to follow those instructions when it looked impossible. Peter got his fishing pole and walked to the Sea of Galilee to obey the instructions of Jesus that I'm sure seemed impossible to him or at least contrary to all of his experience. Sue and I have been very careful over these years to do exactly, precisely what Jesus told us. Even when we would travel and minister at different churches, see, he told us, take up no offerings. Well, at the moment, he was really talking about this Bible study that we were having in our house. And he said, from these people, take up no offerings. But we took that with us on the road. And we ourselves, we didn't take up our own offerings. We'd always leave it up to the pastor wherever we were going, whether they chose to take up an offering for us or not. That's, you know there's ministries out there that you have to guarantee them a certain amount of money for, or they won't agree to even come. Now, it has to be enough money to cover their base expenses or they won't come. Way back then, I heard of ministries charging $5,000. They've got to have, if you, we're not going to come unless you'll guarantee us $5,000 offering to pay for our expenses. We never did anything like that. We, did, we were very careful to do exactly how the Lord told us to do it. So like I say, now it was fine for other people to take up offerings for us. We thank God that he speaks to the hearts of many of you that watch this. But you notice, you don't ever see any of us taking up any offerings. You've never heard us yet tell you about any bill uh, that we have or any need that we have. Nope. We go directly to the Lord with it. Now that's the way he told us to do it. And I've taught before. Please don't imitate that. <laughs> and I, 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 we're just out of time. You have to hear from the Lord for yourself. Now, let me see. Let me, okay, I'm going to finish with this. Give me like two minutes. Do you think I ever would have heard, well, by the way, we have done what he told us to do, and he has done what he said he would do. 
He has provided for us. We, we've not missed a meal, except, you know, intentionally on fasting. We're <laughs> telling you, we, our cars, they're, we don't have new ones. We could. I don't need them. We got two great cars that, that work great. We live in a nice house. There's, there's food in there. You can tell I haven't been starving. There's food in the refrigerator, gas in the car. Uh, we've got our health for the most part. You know, got a little few aches and pains at age 76. But uh, hey, all in all, we're in very good health. We thank God for all of that. And, and we're still married. You know, I tell everyone, I started, I started carrying that girl's books in eighth grade, and I'm still carrying them today. <laughs> I got a beautiful wife. What I'm saying is, we, we, we did our part to follow his instructions to us. And he has certainly fulfilled his part, what he said he would do. And I thank God for it. Now, let me finish with this. Do you think I ever would have heard those instructions from, I, to me, they came directly from the lips of Jesus by way of the Holy Ghost. Do you think I ever would have heard them without spending that time in fellowship with the Lord through worship and prayer and his word and fasting? Absolutely not. I didn't get those instructions out of some book that I bought at the local books, Christian bookstore. I spiritually discerned them. I did hear them. That's we spiritually discerned. I off, it, you, you, you hear them in my spirit as I spent time in fellowship with him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is alive and well. He is still speaking from heaven. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, has come to bring His instructions to each of us who will spend time in fellowship with Him. We are admonished not to ignore Him who speaks from heaven. Doesn't say who spoke, said who speaks, speaketh from heaven. If we hear and obey, it will be well with us. If we refuse to spend the time so that we can hear, or if we refuse to obey after we hear, it's not going to be so well, although he is very merciful and long-suffering. Let me read to you Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. He's still speaking. For if they escape not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaketh from earth heaven. He is still speaking. Let's now finish with John 10, 27. My sheep, this is Jesus, my sheep hear my voice. You hear him now by, with your spiritual ear, by the way of the Holy Ghost. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Glory to God. Glory to God solving financial problems and if you want to be honest solving all of your problems spend time with the lord spend time in his word spend time praying in tongues spend time in worship and yes spend some time in fasting you'll get quiet on the inside boy that still small voice is priceless love you so much see you again next time Bye-bye.